there's a game we need to talk about. It's called Dragalia Lost. It's a mobile action RPG. Whoa, whoa, come back. Come on, hold on. Wait for me to finish. It's actually a fantastic mobile game that I really want to talk about. The game actually has a lot going for it. And I really think we should talk about it, especially if you're on the fence about mobile RPGs or you've played a few and you really didn't like them. So let's talk about it. Dragalia Lost is a Nintendo mobile action RPG that released in 2018 that is developed by Cygames, a company behind the extremely long-running and f***ing complicated mobile web-based RPG Grand Blue Fantasy. If you split up the numbers, uh, you get a much higher number. So there's three uh, multipliers we concern ourselves with. There are actually more, but let's not get into this right now. What makes Dragalia Lost different from its competitors? Well, a lot, but on its face, Dragalia seems pretty similar. It's a gotcha game that has a central focus on what I call forever play. Forever play is the attempt to get your player base to always play your game for as long as the game is monetarily allowed to survive, which for some games is really long and others really short. So what companies usually do is make a focus on long form storytelling and ever scaling vertical content. And while yes, Dragalia does do this, it also does it much, much better than its competitors. I should know what I'm talking about when it comes to gacha games. I've got a problem. Since this is an RPG, let's talk about the story first. The story here stars your main character, Yudin, who's the seventh scion to a royal family. After a particular set of events unfold, he can transform into a yeah. dragon, and he is also thrust out of the comfort of his capital and placed into a war with a great evil. The plot focuses on Yudin making relationships with others in order to build up his army and influence so he can take back what is his and save the world. This story starts out with some really interesting events and offers up some unique ideas is, such as the fact that our hero can make packs with dragons, but after a while it seems like a fairly run-of-the-mill story and the nature of this being a long-running game doesn't really help with the pacing of major events. Regardless, however, this story shines in its large and diverse cast and awesome-ass dragons. The cast of those who are essential to the main narrative are varied and intriguing in and of themselves, with the side characters and dragons who can be acquired through other means, such as a summoning pool or events, are where a lot of the intrigue lies. Each character and dragon in this game has a side narrative that you can read and they each offer up a unique character arc for the particular character or a history behind the particular dragon. The writing here isn't bad either and these stories allow for each to get to become their own three-dimensional character and this cast is large so that's really impressive. This cast is also really diverse like it's a gacha game that isn't just girls with their cheats out. There's really a lot of interesting designs here and oh oh my god oh also the characters bob their heads to the music in game and if that's not a mood i don't know what is yes the story and character events are interesting to the point that I could really see someone simply playing this game for the main story and character side stories and not really bother with the gameplay too much but the gameplay is definitely nothing to scoff at. Dragalia's gameplay is mwah. You've got eight weapon types and five elements. The elements are exactly what you would think, and the chart is the same as in most phone games, but the weapons are what makes this unique. Each weapon type has different optimal combos and ways to play. Because of this, the gameplay ends up being frenetic and challenging. The gameplay also has a lot of different types of play. You've got solo play with challenge battles and mercurial gauntlet, a mode in which you have to beat this plump up before the time runs out. This game also boasts really cool and unique events, especially their collaboration events, which at the time of filming this is Monster Hunter related. They really offer up some cool, unique stories and some awesome boss battles. Here's to hoping they collab with Persona, please. And you get the regular RPG grindy missions for materials to upgrade your characters. However, the upgrading in this game isn't like every other game. In other gacha games, the characters are the name of the game. There will always be a new meta character, that being the new best thing, that always needs to be pulled for in the in-game casino, I mean summons. Most progression in those types of games are tied to the characters, and when those characters get outclassed eventually by others, they remain relatively useless. This game proves to change this fact. While yes, some characters are inherently better than others, the game offers a more effort-based progression system with the Halodome. 
The Halodome is a castle grounds in which you place structures that permanently enhance your characters. There are buildings, or rather dojos, for weapon types as well as specific element altars. There's even event-based buildings as well. This makes the game feel like it's a progression system based on the time and dedication that you put into it rather than on just pulling for the best character. Except maybe Glio. You're a mess, girl. And another trend that this game kicks to the curb is the idea that a character's star rating dictates its usefulness. What's insane is that because of the game's great balancing at the moment, the main character who you get in the very beginning of the game and has only four stars is actually one of the best characters at the moment. This makes using a diverse set of characters entirely possible. But what also makes that possible are the developers actually listening to player feedback. Cygame seems to have a mole in the community somewhere. Looking at you, living like log. At times, I'm a mystery to myself. Because they actually listen to complaints. A company listening to its community. <laughs> That's super weird. They've made so many quality of life improvements to this game that it's honestly hard to list, but I'll try with the big ones. Initially, in this game's summoning pool, there were three different types of commodities. There were your characters, dragons, and worm prints, which are essentially character accessories with abilities attached. Naturally, pulling your currency on accessories isn't the most exciting thing in the world. Surprisingly, they actually removed this feature, placed the worm prints in a separate shop, and then listened to the community and enhanced the experience. They've also severely enhanced quality of life with like a million features that I'll include on the screen now. Also, this game is ridiculously free to play. I've played this game since release and spent nothing on it and I've gotten almost every character that I've wanted. While that is definitely partly due to luck, this game also gives out a ridiculous amount of free currency and pulls. At one point, I had over 78 multis worth of currency saved. <laughs> like, that's insane. Oh, and they've made the end game a lot more accessible due to listening to feedback. Have I talked about the end game yet? Well, I should probably... The end game of Dragalia Lost is where the meat and potatoes of the gameplay is at. They consist of grueling boss battles that you and three other players challenge. They require trial and error, but they also require some quick thinking as well. The end game here is always involving, and I love that. Some other titles have a constant loop, but their end game seems lacking because it just becomes an autoplay extravaganza once you've got the correct characters and materials. Here though, while autoplay is definitely the name of the game for the upgrade materials and most events, the end game offers up enough diversity in types of enemies and battles that continue to expand that it makes this feel a little less like like an endless phone game and more like an actual experience. I've never actually felt excitement from a boss battle in a phone game like I have here, and I really enjoy that. The communications between the players isn't the best as there's no voice chat, but there is an in-game emote system called stickers. <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk about this game's community. The community here is fantastic, and they generally always offer the developers legitimately helpful feedback. There are amazing artists. And there are also amazing content creators. Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. Hey guys, welcome back to another Dragalia Lost video and today I finally- Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to my Gala Luca Unit Review. We Hello everybody, it's me, it's Pokemon Joshi. Welcome back to some more Dragalia Lost content. That even when there are some dull moments in the game's schedule, the community always manages to make it interesting. Ultimately, what I've learned in this video is that Dragalia Lost is really hard to sum up. There's so much going on here, there's so much progression, there's so much to these characters and to this world that I really just suggest playing the game because it really is something special. I think it's clear at this point what I think of Dragalia Lost. I think it really does have a lot going for it, and it really gets a bad rap because it's a mobile RPG, when in actuality, it's better than a lot of RPGs I've played on consoles. But there's some questions I wanna ask you. One, what do you think of Dragalia Lost? I wanna know what you think if you've played it before. And two, even if you haven't played Dragalia Lost, are there any other phone games that you've played that you've actually really enjoyed, or ones that you wanna recommend in the comments? And as always, you can subscribe for future videos hit that bell button, and you can also like the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <clears throat>